Hey everyone, I am joined by Dr. Jerome Craig again for episode number 38 as he and I talk about the falsehood of everything in moderation. This is a really important topic because I believe it's one of the big myths that we still need to bust in the diet industry, this idea of everything in moderation and why that could actually be holding you back from achieving your goals. So stay tuned. Thanks for being here and let the show begin. You're listening to the Fitlandia podcast with your host and reformed dieter, Krista King. Engage the power of your mind to kick dieting to the curb today. Hey, welcome back to another podcast with Dr. Jerome Craig. As my guest again today, we are talking about the falsehood of everything in moderation. Dr. Craig, welcome back. Well, thank you very much. Good to be back. (laughs) This is like a really important topic for me because I get a little bit fired up um, when the idea of moderation is like tossed around in the diet industry, right? Everyone's heard it, everything in moderation. Well, that's kind of a bunch of baloney and I want to call BS on it. (laughs) (laughs) It doesn't really mean anything anymore. Everyone's heard it so many times that it doesn't even mean anything. It just it's just falls on deaf ears anyway. But what does it right? What does mean it even mean? Anything? I think it, I think it comes for people who just want to maintain the status quo. If you don't need a change, sure, everything in moderation probably works just great for you. Well, and and this is what's really cool about the two of us talking about it is we both have like a perspective on what it means and why we kind of got to. Get, get it out. Yeah. And, and you just mentioned it there for you. It's like, yeah, everything in moderation is great for people that are maintaining the status quo. Yeah. But if you're, if you're actually trying to make health and wellness changes in your life, uh, you know, most people listening are interested in weight loss, but you know, certainly any kind of health thing that you're trying to make, m- moderation is not going to work. No, I think I think people use it as an excuse, honestly, because it's something that is so pervasive. Everyone's heard it. They're like, "Yeah, you know, whatever you're doing over there, that that's just that's just too crazy." Everything in moderation, yes. right? And I, I think that that can that's just something that they use to make an excuse. So, like for example, I have a I had a patient several years ago came in type 2 diabetic, multiple medications, life is not going well, wants some change, comes for change, we're going to make change, cannot give up his chocolate-coated almonds every single day, mm-hmm. right? So I, I, I appealed to him, like, we got to get away from this. It's an addiction, right? Right. You, you have a sugar addiction. That's right. how you got to this place in the first place. Right. We need to stop. And the only way to break an addiction to something is to give it up. You can't if you got a cocaine addiction, you can't just have a little line every day to deal with your addiction. It's the same thing with sugar addiction or whatever else is going on. Alcohol, refined carbs, potato chips. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever your thing is. It's not going to serve you if you realize that. Okay. Potato chips might be my downfall. You're not going to put like three potato chips on your plate at every meal and hope that that potato chip addiction goes away. Why? Because what happens in the brain? Well, yeah, they (laughs) taste so yummy, right? Right. They fire up those pleasure uh, areas in the brain. You know, you got the serotonin, dopamine release and all this other kind of stuff that happens (laughs) to change your mood. And you're like, wow, now I feel good. I've got to have more. Right. Absolutely. And then you crash and you feel crappy. And that, that's why I hate the whole everything in moderation. Mm-hmm. But, but before we go on to that, you said something that's really interesting that I wasn't even anticipating we talk about, which is people use it as an excuse. And it, you like triggered something in me that reminded me like whenever I talk about like the no fools detox, where these are the you know five or six foods that we're going to eliminate for 30 days to help people overcome those, reset their body and learn a new way of eating, you will get people that like really slam participants in the program by saying, no, no, you don't need to do that. It's everything in moderation. Like all this, this is, that's just another fad diet that's like taking you down the wrong road. So I think there's even people 
that are using it to keep their loved ones out of these programs and opportunities to correct their health. Yeah, you know, it's like the crab in the bucket. You, you know the story, right? You, you go and you catch crabs, you throw crabs in a bucket. You got two crabs in the bucket, none of them are ever going to get out because as soon as one comes, the other one grabs it and pulls it back in. Uh, it's it's hard to let other people go and change their lives and leave you where right. you are. Right. You don't like that, right? You you you're gonna take that as as saying something bad about you because you're gonna put that back on yourself. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to get rid of everything in moderation. There, there's another there's another idea behind that. It's like stop saying the f word. Well, what is the f word? I'm fine. Right. You know, <laughs> what does that mean? Right. You know, I'm fine. <laughs> it's the same as moderation. <laughs> yeah. So we need to stop saying that kind of stuff. You know, we, we need to stop just keeping ourselves where we are. If we want change, you need to take some sort of radical steps to at least get that going. Right. I'm not saying you have to be radical for the rest of your life. Exactly. Okay. Everything in moderation, Krista. No. <laughs> All right. <I'm> like... <laughs> you don't have to be radical for the rest of your life, but if you want to change, moderation is not going to serve you. I, I, don't, I couldn't agree with that more, but I also want to say this. Even after you reach those changes that you desire, you still may have foods where, or, or alcohol where moderation isn't going to work. Mm -hmm. you, you know, for me, like there's very few, like I know the certain things, donuts and wine, those mm. two things, I have to be very conscious of how I'm feeling when I do indulge, what's going on in my body, what's going on in my, you know, my work life, my stress level, like why am I having this? Like I just yeah. need to be aware and check in to say, is there something else that my brain, my body needs? Because if I'm not aware of it, and I'm just trying to like overcome some stress or like, you know, pump up my mood. Well, then I'm back in that cycle. Like it's so I have to be really. Yeah, I, I think what we see is there's a slippery slope for everyone. Right. So, you know, people say, yeah, I, I needed to lose 20 pounds. So I went on this strict diet. They did Nothing in moderation, right? For them, it was all severe. They got there. They hit that weight loss goal. And then they're like, phew. Yep. Now I've reached that goal. Now what? Well, I'm not going to keep eating like this, you know? And so they slip right back. And then maybe initially they have, okay, I'm just going to have a little bit of ice cream. That, that seems to be a trigger that I see a lot with people. So ice cream is very, very difficult. Okay. For some, mm -hmm. you know, even if it gives them digestive distress, right. <laughs> they still, they, it's like this addiction, right? Mm -hmm. To that sugar, the salt, the creaminess, whatever. Yep. And they'll have a little bit and it just keeps going. That little bit becomes, while well, they bought a little pint, it lasted three days. Now that pint's one day, so they're just going to go and buy a quart and then they move up to the gallon That's tub. Until you're back in that old pattern. And then pattern. they're just in that pattern. So right. I, I think we got to watch out. I, yeah, I, I don't like the term everything in moderation. I think it's, it's worthless. Yeah, so I think it's more about defining what works for you and your body mm -hmm. and 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 it kind of ties to the podcast episode we just recorded which is um food journaling and why that's really important if if i can understand what takes me back into an old pattern whether it's what's going on in my life related to food and am i trying to self-soothe am i not doing enough breath work am i not moving enough that you know the other ways that can support the brain then it's probably going to be a slippery slope for me to go and have that donut or that glass of wine yeah like i'm going to be better served with my sparkling water with a splash of apple cider vinegar or a splash of bitters yeah. instead of that glass of wine which is like oh that was nice i wanted one glass but no, no, <laughs> no. Very few people can just put the cork back in the bottle and walk away, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. so if if we were to suggest to folks, like, what's the best way to understand what occasional, whether it's occasional, rare, never, like, how do they identify which things can go into their moderation, occasional, rare, never bucket? I think that one of the best ways to approach it is the occasional mm -hmm. and think of it as occasional you know at 
And there, there's this great idea. So, you know, we tend to use food as celebration. Mm-hmm. But if you're using food as reward and celebration on a daily basis, then I think you need to raise your standard for celebration, right? <laughs> because if you're celebrating everything... I survived the day! <laughs> you survived the day, then maybe we need to just raise that standard a little yeah. bit. So looking at, you know, am I rewarding myself? At the end of the day, I've done a good day, I ate all my dinner, now I'm going to have a candy bar. That is not going to serve you at all that doesn't need to be an occasional thing even that probably just needs to be a rare thing yeah you know so so i think we just need to change the way we celebrate and using food as celebratory for sure it's become a daily thing for people where it used to be celebrations like weddings and birthdays and you know those kinds of things right so um yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put you on the spot with one last question. This is our quick tip, so we'll keep it short. What does occasional mean? <laughs> oh, well, you know, I think occasional, if you're not addicted to the substance or, you know, it's not your, your Achilles heel, you can probably do it once or twice a month with no ill effect. But if it is your Achilles heel, it's something that you know you've had problems with for years and years and years, and it's going to take you back, then it needs to be something that's really, truly rare, rare. celebratory yeah. kind of thing. Well, I love that. I think that's really great advice. And, and really what I would invite all of you listening to do is just become mindful. Yeah. Like yeah. become really mindful about what are those foods or alcohol or other beverages that that trigger something in you and take you away and at the same time take you away from your goals. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's an important connection in there because we want to keep you fit for life so that you're not dieting. <laughs> that's right. It's the only true possession you have is is this, right? It's a, you've got to take care of it so it takes care of you. Yeah. Well, awesome. Thank you again for being a guest on the show. And we would love a rating and review from you all. And tell us, what is your what is your occasional or what is your rare or what is your never? We'd love to hear that. As, as you know, uh, Dr. Craig has had a lot of experience with his patients that find ice cream as their thing. For me, it's wine and donuts, but we want to hear from you too so we understand really what everyone is, is dealing with out there. So thanks again for listening and we'll see you next week. If this is your first time with us, there's loads of ways to get more out of Fitlandia to help you on your fitness journey. First, subscribe to our podcast where we bring you interviews with experts, inspirational stories of transformation, and techniques to help you strengthen your mind to make fitness fun and easy. Be sure to download each episode so you can access them anytime, anywhere. And don't be shy about sharing them with your friends and family to help them too. Also, head over to the Fitlandia website where we're offering up our free recipe ebook called The Type A Fitness Fix. You'll get healthy and easy to make recipes loaded with Fitlandia approved ingredients to support your goals. Sign up today at fitlandiafitness.com.